Morning guys, it's about 7.53 in the morning on this Tuesday, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. And I wanted to come on here and, you know, just give my thoughts. You know, first of all, congratulations to the Chiefs for winning back-to-back -back, uh, Super Bowls. And for me, I can't be too upset. I mean, I am a diehard 49er fan through and through and everything. But, you know, growing up in Kansas and, you know, in that region, northeast Kansas, that is, you know, you become, you know, adopted to being a fan as a, you know, of a team there. And for me, I became a fan of both the Chiefs and the Royals. So, you know, not much you could really do about that. Uh, you just, you know, you just, you know, it, it, just, it just becomes instinct. And I do apologize if I'm stumbling on my words. Like I said, it's early. It's 7.54 now. But like I said, you know, you just become, you know, a fan instantly. Uh, but you still can support your other, you know, your other team as well. You can still support the team you grew up with um, in your other region, you know, of your, you know, of your childhood and preteen uh, adulthood, if you will. Uh, but anyway, the reason I come on here is it's the fact that when you look at the Super Bowl, you know, I said basically throughout the postseason it was going to be hard hitting, it was going to be a dog fighting postseason, and it pretty much was exactly that all the way down to the wire of overtime in the Super Bowl between the Chiefs and the Niners. But, unfortunately, just like previous Super Bowls of the past, it ended in controversy, and there was a lot of controversy that came out of it. Uh, long story short, some videos and uh, photos that have been going viral have been showing the fact that when Mahomes ran out of balance, he ran, he ran out of bounds, if you will, uh, in overtime or at the end of the fourth quarter, mostly overtime, I think. I can't really recall if to go back and look. That basically it went from, you know, going to second down right to first down. You know how they have that score graphic, you know, on the bottom and it shows you what the score is, you know, and everything as well as how much time is left and everything and, you know, how many downs or how many timeouts the teams have. Well, apparently, uh, some people assumed, this is just their speculation and theory, conspiracy theory, that Mahomes ran out of bounds and he got a second down. He didn't make the first down marker. But what happened is when they were showing, you know, showing the fact that it was second down, it switched over to the Super Bowl 58 logo, or sign uh, wording, if you will, logo wording, and then after that, it switched over to saying first down and 10. And a lot of people were like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They, they switched it. What the hell? And people were pointing this out. Now, my aunt, you know, she messaged me and my mom, and she's wondering, is this an error? You know, that's E-R-R-O-R, -E -R -R -R, error. And I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just looking at it like maybe it was... Maybe there is favoritism. I don't really know. But apparently a lot of people felt like there was, you know, something, you know, fishy going on, something suspicious, you know, some favoritism. And then if that's not all, and if that's not, you know, all, if you will, if that's not all, they also point out some photos that were taken of, you know, of holding going on during that run where Mahomes apparently got a second down, but then it was turned into a first down. And then on the winning drive in overtime, it shows that Kansas City, one of the other photos, shows that they had a, you know, an illegal man downfield, a 12th man downfield, you know, helping out when that wasn't supposed to, or when that wasn't supposed to happen. And that should have been called, which would have caused a 10 second runoff. Now, some people are confused about the rules, and I was kind of confused by the rules too. Um, I knew they changed and everything. I knew they changed to where both teams would get a possession and the only way to really win is by touchdown. You know, it's by touchdown and everything, uh, more than likely. But the rules basically change to where both teams get possession. Both teams get possession. And even if one team scores, the other team has a chance to score themselves. And if they don't, that means the game's over. Well, apparently it even states that, you know, had that call been made, had that call been caught, you know, the illegal man downfield, the holding and all that, that at the end of the first overtime, can, if Kansas City still had possession of the ball, they're going into the second overtime, they would resume possession. You know, they would resume it 
and continue on. And if nothing happened then, then yes, the game would probably be over. If you know, if the Niners were able to stop them and everything, you know, but if they still kept possession, but didn't score and everything, you know, for 15 minutes, you know, which has been done, it has been done in football, let's be honest. Then in the third overtime, they continue and so on and so forth. And that basically, if nothing happens after the four initial overtimes, a coin flip is done again and we start over. We basically go into what's known as sudden death, you know, or fifth overtime. And that's happened in football games, college and pro. But anyways, because of this new ruling that, you know, Kansas City was able to, you know, get a chance to go down and score, in which they did. And look, some people have come out and said that uh, what people are saying about, oh, this was all rigged and, oh, you know, these calls weren't made because they were showing favoritism and so was the networks and whatever. Here's the thing. You know, here's the thing. Some people have come out and said that even if that even if that wasn't the case, Kansas City is a good team. Kansas City is a good team and they probably would have done it, you know, without favoritism. They probably would have marched down the field without favoritism and won. You know, that's what people are pointing out that hey, it wouldn't have mattered if what you're saying is true or not, in because even if it wasn't, you know, Kansas City's that good of a team. Mahomes is that good of a player. Now of course, a lot of people have, even my own sibling, my middle sibling, that is, and my uh, husband, my brother-in-law, are starting to wonder if it is scripted. You know, because a lot of people are feeling like, wait a minute, you know, why, why is this happening? What's going on here? Why is this player injured all of a sudden? Why is this player, go, player going off the field? You know, what's going on? It's like, you know, there were these, you know, certain you know, instances during the game to where people were looking and they were like, well, why is Kittle running off? Is he injured? What happened? Or why is Greenlaw going down so quickly? You know, what's going on? You know, people were, they were, you know, you know, dumbfounded, if you will. Like, what, what's going on? And all of a sudden, the speculation, the theory that even I've talked about um, pretty much is coming to fruition. That, you know, this is scripted. Like, the regular season and the preseason is not scripted. But when you get into the postseason, it is. Or maybe even... During certain parts of the regular season, like, you know, the mid parts, you know, the later parts and everything, the most crucial ones to get you into the playoffs, you know, some of those are scripted maybe to a point, but that, that, but that the postseason is definitely scripted. And a lot of people are starting to feel that. A lot of people are starting to feel and believe that that might be the case. And if it is, I'm going to say this right now, if I'm Roger Goodell, if I'm the NFL Board of Directors, if I'm the Players Association and Union, I get this fixed. I get this fixed to why I say there will be no more script writing. There will be nothing that's going to make people believe that. We're going to have clean games from now on. And we're going to make sure we have an officiating crew out there for the postseason games and the Super Bowl that will catch everything that happens. You know, so, so yeah, long story short, no matter how you slice it, you know, a good... A good postseason, once again, you know, ends not only with Super Bowl champions being crowned for the first time back-to-back in the Chiefs, but ends also in controversy. But what do you guys think? Do you think there is any truth to what people are, you know, theorizing and speculating and feeling has, you know, been controversial?